I, I've chosen some of the clip art from, I've printed out the pages, and um, for me, we have these fantastic chefs doing different things, and then we have iconry of food and, and um, different chefs doing all kinds of things. If you are a chef fan, then this um, book of clip art is on CD, and you can enlarge the, the images any size you want, and it, it just encompasses cooking and chefs. And so I've chosen some of these different characters to go riding around on my Four Season Lazy Susan. And right now I need to get the background ready. Okay, so we're going to do a faux finish background, so I'm going to get out my nitrile gloves. These are latex free. I have a mild latex allergy, so I like these, but they're also chemical safe, which means that you can use them to stain and things like that. And you cannot replace um, the amount of assurance this gives you when you're staining. I don't know if you've ever stained wood and the fingertips of your work gloves fall off and your hands are covered with stain that stays there forever. Um, very good idea to use a pair of gloves. They're reusable, so you can just keep using them and using them. I'm going to use a varnish sponge to get my first coat on here. Um, this is a hardboard type product and I'm not going to worry about these are burn marks from the laser. They just paint right over. But um, this is a reversible Lazy Susan panel. You can buy as many panels as you like and they go over the base, which I'll show you after a little bit. First I want to get some paint on there and get it drying. So what I'm going to do is put out bleach sand. That's going to be my undercoat. <clears throat> I'm going to take my varnish sponge, um, or you could call it a base coat sponge. I'm on my non-stick mat, so I don't care if I get stuff on it because it'll wipe right off. And I'll just go through and wipe on one even coat of face coat. This is about 16 or 18 inches round, something like that. Um, you have to look on the website for exact measurements. And look at how fast that base coats, and it's real thin, fine, whoops, as I mow over everything on my table. Real fine, um, thin base coat, which means that it's not going to take forever to dry. <clears throat> So just get all that done. Make sure I don't have any ridges. Ta da! And um, when that's dry, I'll probably go ahead and do one more coat because it is so thin, but this will dry in like microseconds. Okay, microseconds. So here's what I did I stood up, I turned off the remote, I walked two seconds over to go turn my heater down, walked back here, and this is completely dry. So that is how fast it dries when you have nice fine coats. You can go ahead and sand in between coats if you want to, if you feel you need to. This is, oh, yeah, see that's so fine you can't even get dust off of it. All right, and then I'll do my second coat. These are the kinds of tools that um, just save you so much time and energy. Now this, what I'll do with this is I'll wash this out and then I can, you know, wring out the water and stuff and I can use it to varnish or base coat, whichever. My paint may stain it, but um, it's not still in there as long as you wash it out with clean water. You can use them moist, and you can use them dry. A little teeny bit of water in your, um, in your brush <laughs> um, allows the paint to flow a little bit better, um, and the varnish as well. Varnish is not um, allergic to water. Okay, so we'll just keep turning this around, get our coats on there and we'll be ready to rock and roll. It's important when you're going to do a slip slap that you start out with the base solid like this because if it's not solid when you slip slap what will happen is you'll lift off the paint and it will show your wood background and that wood color will come through and you don't want the wood color. A fantastic um, idea that I learned a long time ago and pardon my little bent folded thing. I just ran out of my Gray Matters palette paper, but I've got this fantastic cardboard sheet that comes on the back. Um, and also, although mine is a mess because I keep showing it to you, you all, um, I have my Gray Matters advertising, the information, the um, not advertising, I guess it's the, the gray scale and the color wheel and what make complementary colors and what explains it. This would be great to cut down just a little bit and put into a sheet protector so that you have one handy always when you need to access it. Um, and then these, what I do, I keep a stack of cereal boxes, Gray Matters things, manila folders, and then whenever I get done with my um, 
my base coating sponge and I've got, say, more white paint out, then I'll just go ahead and put a couple of coats on a couple of these boards, however much time and effort I want to spend, allow them to dry, and then these make the most bestest ever practice sheets. So they're good to have a pile of them. You'll have cream and green and red and you have all the different kinds of colors after a while. And you'll always have, especially if you're going to go take classes, these are fun to bring to class because you can, a lot of people have a little intimidation, but you could paint a little sample and not feel pressed to be perfect on your sample board. Okay, as you can see, I've made a nice mess on my no, non-stick mat. And what will happen, this actually just comes right off. Okay, but it's easier to come right off if I just missed it and let it sit for a couple shakes. And <clears throat> then I use my paper towel and it comes off just at, in a body of removal instead of me having to scratch at it at all. They're very, very easy. I have not found anything that will stick to this. We'll talk about this later on in the project. I'm going to make some stuff out of epoxy wood product and it doesn't stick to it either. Perfect. So for those who have been painting with me for a while, um, you've been with me since I have taped together my um, two craft mats. They come quite big. They are too big to put in the camera. They're 18 inches wide, I think. But frequently I'll get something too wide or I can't keep it in the camera. So what I have done, and I just like to kind of show this off just a little bit. You can see up here, can you see that yet? Let's see. Up here, this is where my spattering has happened and this is my mat underneath. I have been using this taped down here for, golly, I'd say it's been maybe two months, something like that. So my paper is perfectly clean. My mats are perfectly awesome. And I will just retape them down. The one thing that's kind of funny, here's the edge of my table right here. Um, tape doesn't stick to these very well either. So what I find myself doing is I get about one project out of this before the tape starts peeling off the edges. So I have to retape. Um, and I don't really want the tape. There's my, where my overlap has been. I don't really want the tape, but um, I need the tape to prevent stuff from going in there. So um, kind of just kind of a fun little tidbit. I wouldn't paint without a craft mat like probably ever again. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use drying time extender, which I have puddled on my palette, and some antique white. <clears throat> we're going to use a big oval glaze brush and we're going to wet our background. And I could probably use my varnish sponge with this, but I'm just going to brush it. When you're doing this, you want to work it into the surface. If you do not work it into the surface, the paint will grab where you do not have um, the drying time extender. <clears throat> this will keep the paint open a long time. And to get this kind of weird background that I have in my brain, I want to muddle around for a bit. So if I'm going to muddle around for a bit, I better have some open time, otherwise it won't work. <clears throat> this will, I could put paint right on this and I could wipe it right off. It's like an antiquing medium almost. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay, so we'll go both ways, get it worked in. And you don't really want it too wet, so then what I'll do is I'll just go across it and kind of wipe off the excess. Then we're going to go in with the medium dressed on our brush. <clears throat> it's a little bit of medium and paint. And we want to tint the background. So I don't want to put a whole lot on there because I don't want to base coat it because you'll see why in a second. really good that I went back through and did my second coat because I did not realize that this is how I was going to approach my background when I did this background. Normally I do a slip slap wet and wet. So this, when you slip slap wet and wet, you create a whole new color. Well, by doing a sheer wash on top, I'm also creating a new color, but it is in a layered type effect instead of in a solid kind of mushed, mixed paint kind of effect. <clears throat> okay, now what I want to do is I'm going to take my sponge, I'm going to put my gloves on. 
I'm going to take my sponge that is moistened with water <clears throat> and I'm going to take off some of this. By the way, this can be reactivated, this medium can be reactivated a little bit while it's fresh. So if you rub on it, you'll dig a hole. If you don't want to do that, be careful. Okay, so this is creating this really kind of neat mottled background look. And I'm twisting and pounding on it. <clears throat> Get you in a little closer so you can see. Okay. Now the reason I didn't sponge on top is because I really don't want the stipply, spongy kind of look. <clears throat> now we'll go down to the bottom. Bottom's going to be heavier colored. We'll work that up into this area up here. Okay, so continue on. Okay, and then we'll go into this a little bit more. And we'll keep kind of playing and building. Okay, so now I think I'm going to go into a little bit darker color. <clears throat> we'll do a little terracotta and see how that looks with this. Might be a little too orangey, we'll see. I'm going to mix dirty brush, terracotta. Now every one of these, every other one of these is going to have, um, is going to have one of the the bike riding figures, chef figures. I can't decide if I need all of these to have the same amount of this mixture, or if I can get by with it. So what I'll try is every other one first. And I'll wipe off my brush from time to time so that I don't pick up and move around. I don't want to muddy all the colors together. <clears throat> and don't forget to muddy your colors as you go. And you can put a little bit of extender as you need to. to do every one. We'll see how it goes. So those of you who are new to this video thing, um, I design on camera. Um, I hate painting things twice. When I started painting, I painted for bazaars, and so I'd make a hundred of everything, and so to repeat a painting is almost painful to me. So I save some steps by designing right on camera. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I think we're going to have to muddy into those other little Places. Maybe not as much. Maybe can I get by with it? Carrying without carrying? Maybe so. And you don't want to touch this while you're doing it because if you touch it, then um, you're going to end up with it'll remove paint from that area. Now we'll go into <clears throat> we'll go into a little Mississippi mud. And this seems kind of backwards to me, but I need to tone that down just a bit. So I'm going to Mississippi mud plus this um, the terracotta color, <clears throat> and this will go into these big areas. Tone it a little bit more. Okay, what do we see? Definitely made it darker. 
<clears throat> when you start feeling like you're out of control, I'm starting to get a little sticky, then that's when you have to hit the dryers and then you put another coat of your stuff on. I'm going to keep going and see if I can't continue. Now we'll give a little kiss of just at the edge with the Mississippi mud down here. Almost like we're glazing or um, shading the edge, antiquing the edge. I like the choppiness going on. I think we can probably spatter while we've got, <clears throat> while things are tacking up on me. So we'll go into the Mississippi mud. Heavy where we want those. Oh, and cool, look at what it's doing. So the water that's, um, because I have the retarder stuff on there, <clears throat> the water is, as it hits, it's making it expand and giving me like a salted thing. So why don't we just do that? Let's just spatter it with water. Now, I may be starting this project all the way over. Okay, we'll let that dry, and I will come back to you and tell you if we're starting all over. Okay, so that is dry, and this is just a really kind of neat effect. And now I'm going to get some water in my brush, and this is going to be way too strong. I've got... um traditional burnt umber, so I'm going to mix it with the terracotta lot. And now what I want to do, get on my artist buddy. This will allow, this will set up, and so it will give me different painting positions, but it will also allow me to spin and do what I want to do quickly. Um, a little bit redder color, I think. So I'm about half and half mixing my brush. Okay, so now we're gonna go over here. And I don't think that's dark enough. Okay, so I'll get a little bit darker mix. Not so much red. And we'll gonna stand up for this one. Got it side loaded on my brush. Just go straight around for that kind of antiqued kind of look. In case you haven't gathered yet, choppy and texture in your background is wonderful, at least for this project. Okay, so I think a little bit heavier. Yeah! Lost control of the paintbrush. Just wipe that out where it wasn't blended right. Now I've dried this under a blow dryer. Just sat there and held it on it for a while. So that's why it's not lifting back off. <clears throat> Sometimes you have to set mediums like that with like a spray of like a acrylic sealer kind of a thing. Okay, I've done a little sampling down here and I think that this color will be the color that will work. So I'm going to take my half pipe compass and I'm going to open it up. This is the compass with a lid and so you can put your lid on which means that when you reach into your painting bag you will not get stabbed. It also prevents this from getting broken. Um, it has lead on board, so if you ever lose your lead or it breaks, then you have a replacement. This is a very wonderful feature. Okay, I'm going to pull my artist buddy back up here. 
Okay, and so we'll get this locked so it's going to be right about the edge. And then what you do is you just run your compass along, keep your hand in the same position. Whoops. Just lose it? No. There we go. Okay, now in order not to have to um, mark all of my checks and things like that, I'm going to make a secondary line that is going to be my check line. And I'm going to move this so that it's not running into my stuff. Okay, so I'll do that. That'll be how high my first row checks goes and how high my second row goes. Then I can just paint them with my brush and not worry about it. All right, so when you're making checks like this, you're going to use a brush in good condition. This is a half inch flat. I'm going to use charcoal. And the way that you load your brush to get a good flat um, is you push, 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 and just a microscopic amount of water in your brush. But you want it flat on the brush. And then when you come here to your surface, you're going to line that up with your line. Nice even pressure. And you're going to try to keep them going down. It's really, really easy to um, start wandering and meandering, so make sure that you take a look at it from time to time to make sure that your checks stay in good form, going straight to the center of the piece. Okay, we're going to paint the band, and I've mixed a little black plum in with deep burgundy. Deep burgundy is just a little too bright for what I want, and there's not a color that I really like. Okay, so we're going to go over here. What I'm going to do is do even pressure, and I'm going to connect my checks, and that is what is going to make making this band easy. As long as I don't try to go too far and I keep even pressure in my brush, then I can make a beautiful, beautiful band around. And that's going to be a lovely sit down kind of deep red that doesn't cast and get too much attention. All right, I've got traced drawings. I've got them placed. Now a smart thing to do at this point would be to go ahead and tack them down if you've spent some time positioning them. I wanted the wheels to kind of touch and that kind of stuff, so I'm just going to use a little bit of tape. Make sure that my men are straight across from each other. I do have a system to this. I've got motorized vehicles opposing the pedaled vehicles. So there is a reason I put them there. These are tall and skinnies and these are wide and fats. And this little guy is kind of going down a hill and she's kind of going up one. So um, just take a little time and get them balanced. Okay, as I'm tracing, I want to make sure. Yaw, I get my stuff together. I'm going to use my um, Triple Threat Ghost Rider. This has got a white ceramic lead, a gray ceramic lead, and a roller ball that has no ink. And what that means is when you're doing your pattern, it just glides. The other thing that it has is it has this grip. I cannot, like, I don't recommend things um, that I don't use or that I don't love. And this is a godsend. I can't ever trace um, without my hand all cramping up and I get that big groove in my finger and stuff. Um, this eases the entire pain and I don't even mind tracing anymore, which is saying something. Okay, as I am getting ready to paint more of my Lazy Susan, I want to get started on what's going on that finial topper thing that hides the, the piece. I want to take my baseball bat and my milk jugs and I want to make them into wine bottles and wine glasses. And then I've got my little plate, but I don't have any cheese. There's no cheese shapes. I'm going to put my gloves on because this stuff is um, epoxy and that's um, you mix it together. Okay, we're going to use quick wood to make a finial. I've got some stacked up cookbooks for my chefs, and I'm going to make a plate of munchies. We've got little milk jugs and baseball bat that's going to become a wine glass and a wine bottle. And But I don't have any cheese, and I don't have bread, and I don't have any grapes, and I think that they need them. So I've got my quick wood, which has a little seal on it. I wear, I'm wearing <clears throat> the nitrile gloves. Peel the little seal off, and you'll see it looks like almost like a Tootsie Pop on the inside. Okay, I get a sharp knife. The detail knives are awesome for this. 
All right, so I'm going to cut off enough to make what I think will be my bunch of grapes. This dries really nicely and quickly. Okay, so I've got the gloves on, of course, so that I don't have um, uh, chemical stuff. I, you know, epoxy just is strong. So this has got a little bit of an odor, but it's not bad. So now what we're going to do is mix this together. And what happens with epoxy is when you mix the two parts together, and the gloves do make this a little bit more cumbersome, but um, it's just safety is good. Okay. So, and I love that. So what this dries, it dries hard as wood and um, you can paint it and you can saw it and you can drill it and you can do whatever you want with it. So first you mix it all together so that you've got a creamy blend and it air dries so you don't have to bake it. Okay, so I think we're about there. Now I use my little knife. I'm on a glass palette but this doesn't stick on this um, non-stick mat too, but because I'm having to cut, all right, now I'm going to do that little bally rolly roll thing, whoops, to make some grapes. Okay, get a couple of those together. Ah, get off there. Make them all the right size first. Now I'll just shape them all into balls and I'll join them together. Okay, now I'm gonna join all of these little guys together to make like a little bunch of oversized grapes. Okay, and they're gonna be on the plate. Let's see what we've got. I think we'll put one more down here, and then it looks like it's hanging over the plate. They look a little bit like muffins or rolls, but I think once we get a, a painted bunch here, I think they'll be okay. So now I'm going to lay this down to dry. Okay, we can reshape them just a little bit. Okay, now the next thing that I think I need is I think I'm going to need a wedge of cheese. So we'll go through the same process. I'm going to mix this up without you having to torture test, watch me do it with these gloves. And, um, and then I'll make my hunk of cheese. Okay, I've got that mixed up. Now I'm gonna use the, they've got these sets of tools. Um, this one's got like a little roller, so you can roll things out. Um, it's got points on it and scoops on it, and they've got these different shapes. Oh, that's a cutter. That's cool, that works perfectly. Uh, this one's got stars and a pointer and a star on the back. Um, really cool little sets of tools. We've also got a big clay roller and a needle tool, but we've got a new needle tool and I think we're going to quit carrying this one because this one has a needle that's that hides. It has a retractable needle so the danger level goes down a little bit. So now I need to make my cheese. So the cheese is going to be square or square-ish. So what I want to do is create that back rounded corner like a hank of cheese. And then I'm going to use two of my tools and I'm going to press and form. Okay. To make that little wedge shaped formed thing. Okay. flat. I'm getting a little bit long, so I'm going to kind of squanch that. All right, now I've got to have some holes because, of course, this is Swiss cheese, so I'll use the little needle tool here. I'm just going to dig some holes in it. Okay, now I want to use okay, that to straighten you out. And once again, you can sand this, so don't feel like if you get to the end and you've got a little booger hanging off or whatever, don't forget that you can sand it. Okay, I'm going to leave that guy there, and now it's time to mix up a loaf of bread. And I'm going to need a little bit more for my loaf of bread, I think. 
So I'll cut off a little bit more. And then I'll shape a loaf of bread. Okay, I think I put off a little bit too much, so I'm gonna make some bread. Make a little baguette. So that's gonna be like a fat rolled loafy kind of thing. Round my edges. I do kind of feel like I'm in grade school again. Okay, now when this dries, this will come right off of this um, little thing. Now I'm going to make those, those um, whatever that stuff is called, those little um, slices kind of. I think I want to slice a little bit better. That's not quite as sharp as I want it to be. Okay, so now I've got some cheese. Do I have enough holes in my cheese? Hee <laughs> hee, this is fun. Okay, and now I think I wanna make my wine bottle be just a little bit more substantial. So I'm going to cheat and use this shape, which is the baseball bat. Okay, get that on there. I'm probably gonna need this. I'm going all the way around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to form this around this and cheat and make it be, that's too much, so I'll tear some off. My gloves are inching down my fingers. Get them back up there. Okay, so I'm going to squinch it down. I'm going to form it against that bat. Make the top be skinny. And then I'm going to shape this into a little fatter wine jug. You could probably make it into a little Chianti bottle. That'd be kind of fun. Okay, now I'm smooth. And you can tap with your your tools. And you could even round it round if you want it smoother. I love that it's so formable. Okay. <laughs> Slippery. Okay. That part's just sticking out. Okay. Okay, to clean up the play tools put my stuff aside to dry and you just put this little cap right back over the top and you pop it right back down into its tube and I have to tell you I took about a year with my sample that I had uncorked and kept around and looked at and whatever before I did anything with it and this is the same tube from a year um, ago and no problem with it having any waste or drying out um, it's been like that for a year um, so then you just put your tools away and you wait for stuff to dry and then you can sand and paint it and do all that fancy stuff. Okay, as I'm painting the details on my Lazy Susan, my posture is like I'm laying over on top of the piece, partly because it's so finely detailed and then partly because um, I probably don't have a right glasses prescription. But what I want to talk to you about is that this posture is not good for extended times. Um, it's okay if you're doing just a little bit of detail, but I'm going to do this whole project, which will be, you know, a couple hours at least, 
of painting and that means by the time I'm done I'm gonna have a sore back I'm gonna have a sore neck um, I won't have been breathing for that many hours because I'm not getting my esophagus is all scrunched up so we'll talk about the artist buddy which is I have had people who couldn't paint um, write me emails and say oh my gosh you know this has saved my life um, literally you know it has solved their back pain it has solved their um, their arthritis problems and things like that um, you don't have to grip your project anymore so you just take the little adjustment back here and it's got like six or seven adjustments and you put it where you want it and then this little dude right here locks it now we've made had ours made with a larger plate um, so that you can put more substantial things on it um, if you're on a smaller wheel if you press on one side you're going to flip your whole piece over so you want a nice big plate and it's got um, the bar mat that non-skid bar mat so what you'll do is you put your piece up here like this and then suddenly your posture is up where you need it to be and you can do your detail you can move it up the up the mat if you need to and you can move it down the mat um, and you can spin it around okay so if you get it on there straight okay and you can lower it as you need to okay so I am going to switch to this it is um, you know I don't want to be sore when I get done with my painting so I'm gonna switch to my artist buddy okay I'm doing an awful lot of base cutting and not a lot of talking about it but it is truly the stuff I don't think I need to show too much of but I did want to talk about color selection as I'm looking at the colors you notice that mostly they're kind of sitting down into the colors that I've got when I chose the color for the red for the cars and the bikes and stuff like that I knew they needed to be red but my red needed to not be screaming red um, and so what you do is you look for colors that sit down when you look at heritage brick very much this looks like a rusty brickish color but in this case it's going to be my red okay now when I'm looking at my wine bottle same thing I've got to bring some green into this project because of the subject matter sometimes a blue can be your green and sometimes um, you know you can settle greens down so what I'm doing is looking for a green that's going to sit a little bit better and not steal all the thunder red and green can be um, they're the opposites so they can be very strong powerful colors so by making this a paler bottle then I'm making it so that that dark 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 isn't going to leap off the surface okay so as you're choosing colors when you're going to do your own thing like the clip art then you can choose them because of where they sit around and so I've got my book and I know I talk about this book a lot so I've taken all the deco art colors and I've made a little card on the back of business cards and these are baseball card sleeves okay then I labeled them and I put them in um, color order okay now what I can do is I can go okay I know I want a yellow green and then I can look around for something that'll settle a little bit more okay so obviously we wouldn't want to be this dark because we have a fairly light background okay so that that's one of the kind of little helpful hints that you can get when you can see the colors like this it's much easier than trying to look through the bottom of the bottle as I was working on taking my pieces off of my glass, um, it appears that the two-part epoxy adheres to glass. And I can't get these two pieces off. So yeah, here's what I know. It doesn't adhere to the black non-stick mat. So the next time I sculpt, I will definitely use the black non-stick mat. Um, and in the meantime, I'll have to see if I can find an air hole under there and get these off of there. Um, anyway, I wanted to share with you, um, I got the mat out because this is a project that is perfect for, um, let's see, let's get you in a little bit closer. This is a project that's perfect for round brush. Um, but every now and again, and this brush is the easy stroke brush and I love it. Every now and again, you get a little wild hair the way that you take care of that is you flatten it out, use a detail craft knife, and slice that baby off nice and even. Okay, and if you ever get one of those wild hairs out there, then what you do is you slice it off down here at the ferrule. All right, now as we get going on the details, it's time to erase some of these extra little lines that are outside. What I have here is a micro eraser. What I love about it is I can get exactly where I want 
and erase exactly on the spot that I want to erase on. It just gets in there and gets all the nebula details. If you paint lace or any kind of small detail, this is the eraser for you. Okay, I've got a new bottle of gooseberry here, and I want to show you the pop top. It actually will chisel a little hole out of this plastic and pop open the lid so that you can get that plastic off of there. I've painted mine, this is a little blue delf design. I used paint adhesion medium. Um, it's made out of plastic. I used paint adhesion medium and then painted um, this with just a little design. They make great little gifts for artists. We're going to shade the faces of the um, chefs with the gooseberry just in a kind of a general way to give them some shape and some form. Okay, they all get shaded under the hats. And we put this detail on before we put their facial features and stuff on. We don't want to cut through, so I'm going to move to the next guy. His ears will go down his neck. We'll do something inside his little collar there. Hurrah! Okay, we'll just keep on keeping on here. The nice thing about something like these projects where they're really simplistic painting is you don't have to get too crazy with the the shading and stuff like that, it's okay to kind of just have that impression of who they are. They all get little shaded hands if their hands are on yet. That'll be shaded where they're coming out of their out of their uniforms. Okay, and then if they're dry, then go ahead and shade them where their neck is coming out too. Okay, he's already done. And look at him as well. We're going to shade the bread with milk chocolate where it comes out of the bag. And we'll just round that out. I'm going to shade under it and stuff too, but in the meantime, while we're waiting for it to dry, we'll shade on the bag. That little bag is going to have to be made a little bit lighter. All right, so we'll shade on the bag in front of him, and then in his arm, in the bag. Okay, then we'll shade on the bread under things. And then the bread will be shaded on the bottom of itself. A little bit of dry brushing here, but we're going to do it very dry. I'm going to get into cocoa. Wait, that's my base coat. I'm going to get into camel with just a very dry load on Patty's favorite dry brush, and we're just going to streak that. Give it just that kind of high spot. Got to have enough on there, so. Okay. And that gives us a high spot on the bread, and we'll do the top one too. Do, I'm going to do a slightly softer kind of look here because that one's underneath. So we'll give just the impression of that. 
and then we can go just a little bit even stronger on this top one because it's in the light and stuff like that. Okay, then I'm going to dry this brush off completely. This is Patty's favorite dry brush. It's a filbert that's cut like an oval glaze with very stiff um, bristles. So now what we're going to do is do a little bit of rubby, dry rub kind of stuff. See if we can't get that to highlight the way I want it to. Okay. And then we'll take out our round brush. <coughs> And then we're going to give just ever so slight a line to the jags on the grocery sack. Okay, and he's got just a little bit, I think he's got a little bit of a crease right here. bread is not coming all the way out. Let's have it go into the bag completely. Same thing here. Okay. You can go into a little bit of bleach sand. just to give it that little bit of a differentiation. And we can still shade. On its bottom of the bag and where that corner goes behind. That'll give it that form. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna deepen the shading on that bread with, and actually where it comes out of the bag and all that kind of stuff, with burnt umber. Okay, that just gives it just that little bit more depth. Get you on camera part with these kind of I'm painting on one side of a round is keeping everything on the stinking camera okay and we'll give it just one more little liney poo we didn't shade on top of his leg here. I'll give that a little bit of a... And I think that's better. Ah, on top of his bread. That's where we're missing something. We'll skip straight to that number. Whoops. Get you on there. If I can find the guy. Okay, there we are. Well, we have one detailed thing done, huh? Actually, this is some of the easiest painting you'll do. It's just a lot of little parts. All right, we're going to shade the bike. I'm going to use a half inch wide brush, or number 12, and I'm going to shade the bike with um, black plum. The key to using a ginormous brush to do something like this is to make sure that you don't have a lot of water and that I'm going the right direction. So I'm going actually across. And what that's going to do for me is give me a great big wide looking graduated kind of float. I'm gonna do this on all my red where it's coming out of areas. And it's just a very dry float. Do the same. Here and here. 
It's almost just touching it. Okay. I don't really want it at the end, only where it's coming out of stuff. Okay, now we're going to use Autumn Red and our round brush in a dry way, and we're going to give the bike a reflection. So part of my plan was to do the base coats with colors that would be the highlight, or the shadow, I'm sorry. So that way I eliminate one of the steps for myself. So by just running that highlight right up the middle, it makes it look like I shaded to either side. I think we'll skip up one and go into the gooseberry pink and give it the little shine. Very skinny little line, kind of heavy paint. Okay, yeah, I like that. And we'll give it a little highlight down there on that spooky thing. Speaking of spokes, let's go spokes next. Let's go into our bleached sand. We could get out white at this point, probably too. We'll see where we need to go. <clears throat> and I'm going to flatten around so that I can get a little glimmer glisten on my spokes. Flattening it gives me a great little chisel brush. All right, we're going to shade our little sports car here, black plum. And this time we won't have it be so um, so dry. I'm going to shade on the top. I'm going to wipe off my lines probably. I can be pretty generous with the shade with the shade color um, because it's on such a dark color. And under arm, and we'll just rebase coat her jacket. Okay, we'll need to do. And then we need to show where the wheel wells are going. Over. So that is where that's a little shadowed because it goes. It's a little poofy there. Right, now we'll get a dry rubbing brush, a crescent brush, and we'll get into our autumn red and we're going to dry rub. So dry paint, dry brush, dry it off on the paper towel really well. Okay, maybe not so dry so it'll show. go into our pink. Dirty brush is fine. Concentrate this a little bit more to the tops. And 
I think we'll get into a little bit of the bleach sand dirty brush for highlights. And I need to get my brush down to a skinny size again. Yeah, we're gonna have to go to a different brush. So I'm gonna get a round brush. I'm gonna mix the three colors together so I end up with a dirty brush kind of effect. And we'll go shape following. I'm gonna shape following. Kind of dry brush strokes. Okay, to give it that kind of shine. Now we have some top details to put on there. We've got some chrome and some things like that. All right, I've got black plum, and I'm just going to line where these little grills are coming down. Okay, we can kind of line where the shape is different. It gives that a little bit more definition. And now we're going to deal with our little chromes. What we're going to do is we're going to get, first we're going to use the um, slate gray. You're going to do the same thing to all the chromes around all the piece. Okay, I'll just show you this one right here. <clears throat> we'll get into slate gray. Just using a round brush. So once again, I've base coated this so that I can just kind of give it that scumble going down the middle to make it look like I shadowed to either side. That's much easier than trying to shade on either side. Okay, so I'll just go through. We're gonna dry rub the wheel. A little crescent brush. It's gonna be just um, slate gray. Little hub cap there. Okay, and then we'll go into bleach sand, dirty brush. Dirty brush makes a new color than that. Okay, and then we can give it a glisten. and maybe even a little sparkle. Then we'll continue on our hubcaps or on our chromes and we'll just repeat with this and then this is kind of under a shadow area so it won't get too bright there. Now should you choose to you could shade a little bit on some of these pieces like we did with the bike. <clears throat> Okay, then we go into dirty brush into bleach sand and the same thing. Give it some highlights. Barely touching it and making those little sparkles. Okay, that makes a nice little 
souped up car look. I have decided that it would be wise to go into my chrome and give it a little shadow, if I can find my shadow color, of graphite. Graphite is an amazingly kind of cool color. I'm liking this color. So this is going to be that really dry thing like we did on the bikes. Okay, and we're going to, where it comes out of stuff, I'm going to give it a little shade. And that is just going to give it just that little bit more pop and oof. something went terribly, terribly awry with my little details back here, but I don't think I'm going to sweat that. And I have no idea what's going on in the front here. Okay, so this needs to be finished. This is in front of this, so we'll give that that detail. We could shade just a little bit further. If we do it on two sides, that should keep it rounder and raised. And then I have to finish this little detail right here on the front. Sparkly things usually are dappled. So if we want this to really look like if she's waxed and polished the car, we'll give her some sparkly stuff. Okay, so moving right along, we're going to take light avocado and maybe a little water. So thinned light avocado. And we're going to scumble in some of this greenery back here. These are just like celery stalks and things like that. You can paint it more carefully if you'd like to. But I like it just that loose little something or another. And then we'll go into our highlight color and, and do nothing. So we'll go into straight light avocado and then we'll give it some top foliage all leaves and things she is zooming and booming Okay, and I think we're going to make these, these little guys back here, I think they're going to end up being tomatoes. They could be garlic. Um, yeah, I don't think garlic in this case. They could be garlic very easily. The problem that I have with them being garlic is that I have a lot of yellow on the side of the board. And so if I make them garlic, I'll have yellow cheese. I think she needs to be a blonde. So I'm going to have yellow garlic and a yellow background, and that's a lot of yellow. So I'm going to make these guys soft, washy tomatoes. Okay, give her a little bit heavier. 
just to one side just to give a little indication of something going on there. Okay, now I've got to get her some hair color. We'll do our little roll bar. Dustin drew this wonderful um, set for me, and I had to go ask him what this thing back here was. It's a roll bar. It comes up behind, kind of. I'm just going to go ahead and finish that line there. Okay, this is where our Q-tips come in handy. We can give our seat, which is right here, a little highlight with is it camel cocoa? Cocoa. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and paint our cheese. One of the things, as if you're painting something, like you take your clip art and you want to do your own um, colors and stuff on it, which is a lovely way to start um, designs. One of the things that has always helped me is to start with what you know. Okay, and that is great advice that my friend Paula gave to me one time. Okay, so we're going to go down with this cheese right here, and she just kind of gets cheesified all the way down. Okay, so you shade on the thing that's not getting the light, and so I think this corner right here is curved away from us. And that needs to be blotted. Okay, so we'll kind of wash that. And then we want to shade where it comes into her. And then we'll shade where it comes behind her. Actually, we'll wash that too. give it a highlight. Our highlight, I think we'll just go straight to bleach sand on our highlight. We might end up washing this with something else. Okay, and it's looking tremendously uncheesy to me right now. I think what we need is to get those little holes in there. So we will take washi milk chocolate. And we shall paint the little cheese holes. starts looking a little more cheesy once we get those holes in there. Okay. Alright, for color balance I decided Sally needed to be a brunette. So we've got her hair based with black, and I'm going to go through and make some streaks. Now I'm using gray. If she's going to look too gray looking, then I will change that, but maybe that's okay. And you notice that I had not based her hand down here before because I knew I was going to be doing all that stuff to that car. So sometimes it's best to leave that kind of stuff till later. We'll get that. 
And I also got just close enough to my line that I couldn't erase it, which is, if you ever have problems with erasing lines, that's what's happening, is you've gone over it with paint and sealed it down. So I'm gonna go right in, right on top of it and just do a little bit better job. All right, I'm gonna add some painted detail to Sally's scarf with a little bleach sand. Let's give her a pink polka dot scarf. Be more faded in the background, so I'll just press on those. Does she need to have a fringe? I don't know, maybe so. I think pink polka dot scarves are probably a good idea for all people. Okay, so we're going to go into the black plum with a dry little float. I'm going to shade her scarf. I'm going to highlight Sally's face with a little bit of bleach sand. And then I'll go ahead and get her hand shaded that I didn't base coat before. And that's going to be that really dry float. That isn't as dry as I wanted it to be. Okay, then I'll trace her features on. Okay, this is where I want to cheat, and I want to just use my um, Rapidograph pen. And just put those little details on. That way. If you get it clogged, then just bleed it on a paper towel. Okay. Okay, and we have the tiniest microscopic crescent brush. Crescent um, is the ones that we're doing the dry rubbing with, and she needs cheeks. Okay, and she also needs a little sparkle in her eye. If it's alive, it needs a little sparkle, right? Except for I would have to switch to a much sparklier little sparkle maker. Yeah, that's not so good. I don't use it very often, but this is the number one Raphael. Get right on in there and give her a little, little sparkle. Okay, if you use the pen to do your detailing, you're going to need to mist this with one coat of, or a couple coats of, um, like Krylon um, 1311. That way, you don't brush off with the, um, with your varnish, the. Um, the inking details. Okay, while I have the pink in my brush, I'm going to go ahead and do the cheeks on the other guys. They all need to have that little bit of a blush going on. He's got a lot of pink on his face. Okay, now I can wash my brush. I'm going to shade next to her face. Just to distinguish her from her from the cheese there. Give her a little dimension here. Get that 
geez, a little darkness over here. Okay, it's time to do some highlighting and shading on the uniform. I'm going to attempt graphite for her. I think I can like that. Okay, and then her arm is slung over. I can shade there. All right, it's time to do the Trevor's moped here. So we're going to, and this is going to be, this is three eighths and I think it's going to be just a little bit too big. Let's find something smaller. What I love about these brushes is they're microscopic. So when we're painting something like this and you need to dry rub and you really need that rub, um, this is great. This is a quarter inch. I'm going to go into the antique, nope, autumn red, and I'm going to dry rub this is called sneak attack. You almost can't tell I'm doing anything. But if I went right with the pink, I think it would be too, too stark. So this just gives us something to sneak up on it with. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it right over these um, chrome things. Yeah, I can see that. You've got to do it bigger than you're going to want the pink. All right, now dirty brush into the gooseberry pink. Make sure I'm not wet. And then we'll do that area there. And the last little area here, got to reload. Okay, I think that's good enough. <clears throat> now we'll get a flat and flute. Okay, so our flat that we float with, you'll get prettier floats if you let your brush stay in water just a little bit longer. Um, like if you just rest it. Here, let me show you. If you take, I do this with my Raphael all the time. So I've got my water basin, and this has got this little handle that you can carry it around with. But it also has um, very filthy sponge and some brushes sitting in water. Not good. Anyway, but what I like is I like to wash here and then just rest my brush here because what will happen is the, the bristles will absorb the water and then when you go to load water and float, it will be the water molecules will attract to each other. So if you let it just rest on here for just a few minutes rather than letting it rest on its nose in there, like this one is, um, then you'll get prettier floats. Okay, so we're going to load into, <coughs> pardon me, black plum. And we're going to float. Try to keep you on camera. With the black plum. Okay, so under everything that's under. So notice that my graphite lines are not disappearing. This, in this case, is optimal for me, but sometimes you want your graphite lines to disappear. I'm using regular wax-free um, transfer paper. We carry it on the website. And you can also use Choco paper, and that will make the lines disappear. Okay, so you, can, you have two choices. Sometimes you want lines to disappear. And with Choco paper, they will. Okay, so I've got these real skinny areas. And once again, I'm still using this big number 
um, number 12 flat. And I'm not afraid to do that, but I had to reload to get a little more control. Got my cute tip. I think I'm about ready to retire this one. I have made lots of messes. And this one's still pretty sharp, but this one I've blunted because I've been scrubbing with it. So time to get a new one. Um, you know, you think about these things like this, these Q-tips, as if they're Q-tips. Um, and you think that they're going to, like, they're good for one dab and then you're done. But I have used this Q-tip, um, gosh, I think for this project and the one before this. Um, so, I mean, they just go and go and go. So when you buy a set of them, you're not buying a set that you toss away all the time. Um, you use it until you wear it out. And then you probably could use it some more, um, depending on as long as you didn't need the control. Okay, so we'll go ahead. This is a little bit rounded, this little fendery thing here. So we'll float on either side of the little fendery thing. right over our detail there. Uh, we'll put that detail on next. Give it a little bit down there. <clears throat> when I'm floating small like this, this is when I use a very dry float because I don't want that water chasing all the way across my number 12 flat. Okay, and notice that the position of my brush is on its chisel edge. I almost don't have the whole brush even on the ground. Okay, now we'll flip float, meaning we'll do back to back. The floats are facing each other. <clears throat> back side here. Okay, probably under. Okay, I think that's probably sufficient. Now we have to make that a little bit more <clears throat> highlighted. So I'm going to get into the gooseberry. And I want to see a little bit more texture. So I'm bringing it up quite a bit. And I can almost leave dry brushed marks. And that would make me angry. And when I'm trying to leave dry brushed marks, that means that I'm not wiping everything out of my brush. I really wanted to leave dry brushed marks on this skinny part. I could get my liner brush out. But this little skinny brush is doing a pretty good job. Okay, next, chrome. Okay, I've got this chrome all based. Just that mix of the yellow, the slate gray, and the graphite. And now we're going to highlight it. Oh, well, let's shade it first. I think that that works better in this case. I'm going to shade with graphite. That short little floats with that fully loaded brush. It's really amazing what a difference that does make just shading these little bits. It's not hard, it's just a little swipe with the brush. Joins that. We'll give it a little shot there. Oh, time for the cute tip, right? Somehow or another, I just left a giant blob of paint there. Shade this side. I've got to shade this chrome on his tires too. I'm not quite sure how that all comes together. I'm just going to pretend that I know what I'm doing. 
and that will be gone. <clears throat> the nice thing about artwork like this is nobody is going to be looking at it to find out if I have prowess at painting chrome and know what the parts are called. Okay, so now we'll start sparkling. This is where I'm going to flatten my brush, get a little bit closer so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so we're going to use the dub gray on our liner brush, and I've got to get in there real flat with my liner brush. <clears throat> this is actually a round brush. I'm going to use the chisel. This will work if you make sure that your color that you have um, for your highlight, or the color that you base coated is dark enough to look like it's shadowy. Yeah, missed that line completely. I don't want to cover up all my base coat. And I'll go here. that. Then we go bleach sand, dirty brush, and we give it the little highlight. And then this one we're going to give the little sparkly highlights. A little trailing. And we can give this just up a little bit more. Like it's glinting. Okay, the handlebars, same thing. Back here on the chrome, back here. Same thing here. I haven't done the dub gray yet, though. I think that gives everybody just enough sparkle. Okay, I think on our little step thing here, I think this is going to have some kind of grid type stuff. So let's give that some graphite grid. And then we'll give it some highlights on the alternating high spots. So. And I think our white wall tires are not very white. So we'll go in <clears throat> and just kind of, because that was just like one base coat of water in my brush. If you get water in your round brush while you're painting, um, then it'll wash out the color. It, sometimes that's desirable, but sometimes it is not desirable. Okay, that gives them a little bit more sporty look. Okay, we're going to shade him with the graphite, his uniform that is. These are going to be controlled floats, no, not a lot of water. <clears throat> okay, so we'll shade where this goes around. The problem with flipping our float over and not just turning the project is you can't see where you're floating. So you want to make sure that you're pretty confident where you're going. Okay. And shade here, coming out under his arm, under his apron. These could have to be pretty narrow floats. Don't be all wide floated fabric isn't going to cast a whole lot of shadow. We have to shade somewhat for form and somewhat for um, casting shadows. 
and this back leg right back here let's just give that a little kind of wash all right now we shape for form let's give him some roundness and that's easy enough on this guy and that's a back-to-back -back float side of his arm. He's kind of disappeared behind his um, kind of both sides of his little cuffs, top of his apron, behind the wine bottle. Let's go ahead. I don't think we did this with Sally. We need to go ahead and find some white and highlight the uniforms with the white. We don't have any white out on the palette at all yet. He's big enough to kind of do something with. Um, Sally is not maybe as large a white area. Ah, wet brush. <clears throat> So give him just a little bit less of a dirty look. By dry rubbing after we've done our dark sh shading, what we're doing is we're allowing the white to kind of scrub back over and brighten up any little loose ends on the, on the shading. So if I have my gray out too far, then the white will kind of take it back a little bit. And a brighter. Okay. And give Sally a little bit of that as well. <clears throat> okay, now we have to decide what's going on with his little face and his hands, and I've got to re-put his hand in. Let's shade our wine bottle in the meantime. We're going to shade the wine bottle with the light avocado. So we'll go across. Hopefully this is dark enough. I want this green wine bottle to kind of walk away with the uh, with the show here. Just want it to be a little hint of green. This is where the highlights will help make that bottle appear just a little bit more round. Okay, we'll get him highlighted, get our wine bottle highlighted with celery green. I'm running out of places to put stuff. It's almost time to re-clean up. I don't understand how painting can be so messy sometimes. Okay, so we'll highlight right there up the middle. And that's not showing up so much. I think, was that my base coat? I think that was my base coat. Okay, so we have to highlight with a mix of the Celery Plus Bleach Sand. Ah, and then that's too strong. Rub it off a little bit more. Chisel that way. And wine bottles are shiny because they're hard. So we'll choose a side to be shiny on. We'll do the top. There we go. 
and then we'll do a little bit of shading to that label. I think we'll use Mississippi mud. Just some kind of old tired color. As you know, that's a fine vintage he's carrying, right? He's not going to just toss it into the food. He's going to drink it. Okay, and then we'll take the same color, Mississippi Mud, and we'll take our round brush and make a little soupy mess out of it with some water. And then we'll give ourselves some scribbles. And you can make that legible or illegible if you want to. And now I'll stop and I'll base coat. Um, I did change his little scarf from the line drawing, and that's just something I want to encourage you to do. Um, don't feel like things have to stay the way that they're drawn. I wanted a little more red back there, and he had just like um, a bow tie. So I'm going to base this and make this into his, into like a kerchief. Sometimes we need those colors to spread around. And we'll make that into a bow. Okay, and then we have um, the base coat is eyes. Let's get his little goggly. So we're gonna do, um, we'll just write that in the directions, I guess. Okay, we're gonna shade his seat with soft black. Nope, I'm lying to you. It's black plum. Just to give it a little bit of depth. Don't need too much detail down there. Let's shade the basket that the little dog is in as well. With that color. Okay, you could shade his um, the cork. And we could even really shade his goggles this color, if I can get the color to stay. Okay. And then we'll highlight the seat, and we've got to do some detailing on the basket. Probably need to do something, something with the dog. I don't know what yet, um, so we'll wait. Let us... Pull out some cocoa for the seat and the basket and some antique white, which I've already got out. And we'll dry rub the seat with the cocoa. just gives it a little definition and maybe just a little bit more with the antique white there we go ah, I'm digging a hole now I'll let that dry and then I'll fill my hole back in okay let's put some little details on our basket this is one of those cases where it's exactly what I did was to make the basket be the shadow color so that I could simply highlight these details because can you imagine trying to shade in a little bit of um, shade on all the little basket weave stuff? I personally cannot. So we've got our shadow color and we will put on our basket detail which is going to be like a little S stroke. Maybe things will weave between it. And we go into our antique white and we highlight the weave just here in the top middle. And then we go bleach sand and give it a little. Now we don't want to make it too shiny because baskets aren't really shiny. Okay, but we want to make sure that you can tell that there's a little bit of weave there. All right, now we're going to use a slightly wider kind of stroke to make our baskets. Okay, so we're going to just do these little swoopies. OK, 
Okay, now they're going to need these downward staves. See if I can make a basket weave. Now we'll go that direction underneath those staves, in between. And that goes up. Wah! That got a little out of control. Okay, we don't want them drooping down too much or we will run out of room for our baskets. Okay. Okay, now we highlight with a little antique white. Just enough little busyness that you can tell what it is. bleach sand in the center, center ones. Okay, perfect. All right, we'll walk our way through our little puppy here. He's got a little beret on his head, which I didn't base coat. That's going to be the um, heritage brick. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that bright enough to show beret. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Give it some, maybe it's blowing in the wind a little bit. Okay, and then we'll need to give him a little dark nose. Get out some black. The um, shading is going to be like Mm, impossible, so we're going to do some little line shading on him. I've got soft black, and I'm just going to make this a little liney kind of moment where shadows would happen underneath his neck, his band, um, under his hat, behind where his hat comes down. On his ear top, and on his ear bottom, underneath his little chinny chin chin. Okay, and now that we've got that done, we need to get a little bit, I've got to make his band, his collar be red as well. I think I'm just going to go into autumn red for that, otherwise I think it's not going to show on his body. We can use autumn red to highlight his hat, dry kind of and then we'll go into the pink and give that a little highlight. His nose gets to be black. And his little eye gets to be black. That's when I pull the pattern out and I say, where did his little eye go? Okay, and could highlight, so we could line just a little bit to separate him so you can kind of see what's going on. And then we'll highlight him. This highlight is going to be with, I'm going to just flatten my round brush in the cocoa color. And I'm going to bring streaks down. And a little bit with the antique white. Within that, whoops, too bright. And I think his little hat could have a little highlight too. Antique white. Okay. Now we'll get the wine glasses are going to be floated with, I'll call this the gray, maybe. I'll try it with the gray first with the, whatever color that is, the slate gray. Okay, I'm going to make this one be on top. 
Allison can be behind. Good golly, we've got some noise out there today. Give it that little shade behind. Okay, and then I think the line would like a white. We'll go with each sand. And the front one can get the white. like that one spot right there where that color just kind of took over so I'll just recolor it just a little bit okay up here to the top we'll take the bleach sand and we'll give him bleach sand kind of gogglies and then some white just streaks across his goggles okay I don't like the headlight being um, autumn red, so we're going to make it a yellow, which is kind of fading. Notice that that's just kind of fading into the background. So what we'll do is we'll take out marigold, which has got a nice yellow hue to it. And maybe we can kind of do some little headlighty action stuff out there. Maybe on the back of the dog across the basket, and then some white on top of our headlighty. Meep, meep. Okay. And then we'll do a little bit of that light shining out the back of this with um, Autumn Red Plus. I guess we don't want them to be on fire. Maybe we'll rub that instead of making him like fire. There I go. Now he's got him just a little shine. Throwing my paintbrush. Wine bottle's got shine. Now I think we're just finally on his little face. Oops, I still have to get his arm in there. All right, so we know he's gonna have black hair. I like everybody in this case to have the same thing. So he gets some black hair. And let's see, he's got some, got a black eyebrow. I'm going to give him a little bit of a hair coming down. It's got a little ear sitting down there somewhere. And suddenly he's much younger. Okay, so he's got a little lip and a little... There's a little ear. Little ear, and he's got a little pudgy face. We're going to make some little checkers on his pants with, I think, I think we're going to do the mix with a graphite plus slate gray mix and a little teeny touch of water just for flow. And I'm flattening my brush and oh boy, that's going to be too big. I'm not flattening my brush. He's got some little microscopic checks here. Okay, now 
flattening my brush just a little bit. If I do this right, they'll all come out nice and kind of the same size. Okay. And then ultimately, who kind of cares, right? Okay, so this is his leg that goes behind. Okay, so that one's coming down there. All right, so we'll make these be fainter checks because they're behind. And this leg. A little bit stronger check because it's right there in front. Notice we're not measuring, I didn't trace. You could, if you have to, you can. Um, I just think that ultimately we want this to suggest checks. We don't want it to scream checks. And the more detail you put in something, the more screaming it becomes. So, like I like the detail of the checks, but I don't like the idea of it being too, too loud and screaming. <clears throat> Alright, he's got some detail in his bow here. It's obviously got to be red. Probably could use a little bit more red someplace, but I don't know where to put it, so we'll just deal with it. Switch to the smaller brush, and let's give, um, actually, let's go ahead and float his clothes first. <clears throat> All the clothes are floated the same. That really dry float. And I've got his hat going just a little bit into his face here, so we're going to get rid of that. We'll give him hair instead. This is the micro eraser. Notice that I can get in exactly where I want to do my erasing. <clears throat> now he's going to be a little bit more of a trick because he is so skinny. So I'll just work in one little part at a time. Remember, go across skinny sections. Okay, and this section is back behind his legs, so we'll get that behind there. And actually, we need to go back through and put his leg behind those spokes. shoulder and then this is where I'll do it just like a little chisely line more of a lining type Oops, gotta get his leg. Otherwise he's just gonna look a little flat. And that got really wide, so wipe it off. Time to readdress my brush. <clears throat> now we'll take the same brush, we'll go into white and a dry brush kind of action and straight on down the leg. His hat, the same thing. And on his shirt, down his arm. 
and across this hat band. Same thing on the bow tie that we did on the dog. It's going to be too small to do an effective floating job. So we'll just do some minor floating. Then we'll go dirty brush into, uh, probably not dirty brush, into gooseberry. <clears throat> He's got detail on his shirt, but I think what we have to do is we have to um, do all of that detail at one time later. Get rid of his handlebars. I'm not sure what's going on on his handlebars here. He's got some chrome, it appears. And all of the chrome is the same colors. Okay, and so we'll give it a little highlight. Oops. Make sure your brush is not wet. He's got black hair. And there he is. Let's see. A little eyebrow sticking out out there. Okay, now I say he gets hair. So let's give him give him a little bit of hair coming out. detail. Yeah, we're going to do a lot of lining detail at the end. Okay, we're on to, I think this is Maximilian. Maximilian has just got fraught with attitude here. Okay, we're going to go with our white. And we're going to highlight his little hat. We could do it before or after. This would be where you would want to get rid of some of your um, graphite lines. I'm not worried about it being blended and smooth because cloth has kind of a funny textury thing. Now on our chicken, we'll have a different little story there. I'm not sure what's going to happen with our chicken and our eggs. Give them a float. That's not quite the float I was looking for. That's what happens when you turn your brush around and you've only blended the one side. Okay, now we'll bring this along his arm, down his chest. Just gives a little bit of detail. 
And he's got a lot of detail on his jacket and stuff, so we'll go ahead. I think graphite, not black. Black, I think, is going to scream off of the page here. Notice we've kept the things consistent that are black, their hair and their tires. And pretty much that's it. So do the buttons. He's got trim. He's got trim on his pants. his black hair. Black eyebrows. This collar has a little collar thingy. I think we can give our little whisk just a little bit. Nah, you know what? That's going to be a linery thing. Let's give our chicken tail feathers a little bit of strength. And they'll have to kind of show through that milk bottle, I think. So we'll put her straight through the milk bottle. Let's see what we can do to make the milk bottle look like a milk bottle. So we'll do it. A gray line and then we'll do some white insides okay our chicken feather head <laughs> chicken feather head is going to be um, with the red The heritage brick, <clears throat> beach sand, little necky feathers, and we'll give them a marigold beak. And he needs an eyeball. Got that same expression. Ooh, okay, my beak was wet. We'll wait and do that with the liners. Okay, now we need a little bit of shading on the egg, the eggs themselves. And I think we'll do antique white. And we'll just do some of this liner shading. And maybe a little liner shading with the milk as well. It could be cream colored. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use and show you that you can use Micron Pen as well. So I've got the number 005. One of the problems that I had is I had only, the smallest was a three on this, and I needed something very, very, very small. So I'm using this one to do all my lining. All right, to do the lining was very much simpler using a nice, fine-lined um, little marker. What I have to do now, though, is if I brush on varnish, this um, the liner will all just wipe, wipe right off and it will leave streaks and all kinds of bad things. So what we have to do is we have to spray it with Krylon 1311 matte finish 
And so I'll just do a couple ch -ch -ch this way and a couple ch -ch this way. And it takes seconds to dry. It's really quite pain free. Um, do not do this in your house or your craft room. Do it outside, well ventilated area, garage, have a fan blowing, use a ventilator or something like that. Um, anytime you have the things that make these cans spray, it, they're dangerous. So just be wary and use them respectfully. All right, so I've got my little finial makings, my cheese and my bread. I don't like my grapes, they're too big. And I didn't take time to smooth out my bottle, so I'm not gonna use that. Um, so what I am gonna do, I've got these, I've got cookbooks base coated. I'm gonna get out a little pale gold powders. Okay, we'll come over here. We're gonna need some detail on our cookbooks, so we'll give them like highlighted spines and things like that. So we'll go into Gooseberry for our red, same colors that we've been using. Okay, give it a little highlight. And then you might go ahead and just give it a little bit of highlight on that front corners, like it's a well-read volume. Okay, because when we stack these up, you're not going to be able to see too much of it. Okay, I've got white pages, or leached sand pages. Okay, on the top one, we'll do that with cocoa. Give the spine a little highlight. We're going to shade these as well. On our plate, that's our pewter mix. So we'll go into the, um, the slate gray. A little bit of bleach sand. Keep it kind of going around. We will have to base coat these. I've got the cheese based with the um, yellow color, the camel there, and then we want to have the top of it be probably like um, the rind. So we'll make the top and the back side be the rind. We'll take a couple base coats. Then we'll take our bread and we'll highlight the top section with the um, camel color. Give it that crusty bread look. stronger. <clears throat> Let's go into some shading. Okay, on our book we will shade with burnt umber. Okay, so we'll shade where the spine comes in. And we're going to shade the top and the bottom of the spine. Okay. On our on our book on our brown book. Okay. So then on our red book we do the, the black plum. Okay. And we do the. Same thing on the spine. Okay, then on our cheese, we'll do something with him in a few minutes. Let's get our bread shaded. Let's use the brown. The, um, it's burnt umber. At 
the base. Now let's switch to the milk chocolate for these cracks. And it's going to give it that nice honey, delicious looking color. And maybe a little bit of that down on the sides. Okay, I could eat that bread. And we'll do some base coating of the other elements. Alright, I'm going to mix some gloss varnish and my gold metal powders. And I want to do some trim on my books to make them look like you know old leather books kind of deal. Okay, so we'll just put some lines. On the ends, I can make that skinnier. This one doesn't have any detail yet. Probably need to get him some detail. You could write the names of whatever books on here that you wanted. In my brain, they're cookbooks, but they can be, you know, whatever kinds of books you want. All right, I've got a wine bottle in the green, and I've got evergreen. I want to just shade for depth. I guess I could give this poor guy a little wine label. And then we'll shade our book. shaded and stuff there. I've got to get my trim done on him. He's not clean yet. Now I want to give my books a little bit of page lining. So I'll go into Honey Brown. Just give him a couple of little pagey page type lines. If you anchor your hand a little easier to get those kind of straighter lines. Okay. Do the same on all the sides. All right, I want to dry brush the cheese with just a little bit of antique white. Just to give it a little more depth. And then maybe a little bit of marigold as well, just to give it a little bit more color. Kind of leaving some high spots there. I like it. And maybe we can have just a little bit of marigold on our bread. Just a little bit more liven, liven it up. Okay, I've got my little guys on the Lazy Susan. I'm working on my finial. And I want to see how I feel about spacing and things like that. And I think I'm going to beef up some of the coloring underneath the um, chef's vehicles. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find my glasses. I've got um, milk chocolate. I'm just going to give that area underneath and coming out of a little bit heavier look. So there's that, there's that. So I think that that will help anchor everybody nicely. So I'll go ahead and give that still got a real warm cast to it um, but it's just a little bit extra weight. Now if you're like me and you've sprayed your piece you might have to work the float into the piece. You could give it a brisk little quick sanding too. Um, not too wet a float will help as well. 
Yeah, see that's not beading up. It beads up just a little bit when you have that fresh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to work on those little wheels there. Bring it down around a little bit more. Stay off his tires. It's almost just a glaze. Except for it's a really dry glaze. Okay, so I'm liking that a little bit more now. I've got these nice blank spots right here, which I'm not also liking. I think we'll treat them about the same way and bring a little bit of this darker, warm color to anchor. Okay, so see how that just carries that color around just nicely. It's empty right here. This is truly almost a completely dry brush, so I'm kind of rubbing it in with my brush. Okay, yeah, I'm liking, look at this side and then compare it over here where I've got this depth in there. I like it much better than the empty. like that. Now I think we'll spatter. Um, and when we spatter, what I want to do is I'll take some tissue or something and I'll just kind of loosely mask the different people. I don't want them being all spattered. Okay, and in there. Half inch white wonder brush. And I think the um, red, which is our what color? Um, the heritage brick. And carry that red around a little bit, give it a little love. Okay, and then we'll spatter with the black plum. deeper and I've got big juicy spatters I couldn't like in that except for they landed right on my car. I do not like that. There we go. Okay. Let's take a look. Okay that just adds some of that weight and, and freckliness. So I've got my little stacked up stuff here, and I've got to figure out how to make it be just a little more balanced. I'm kind of liking the idea of a little chef stack here, books that chefs would have, and I think my cheese is going to have to be up. And then we've got wine bottle, wine glasses. Thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I like it. I don't like empty space right here. From spattering. So I'll come around here and give him just a little bit. And 
and I have just a slight touch of gold fleck in um, on the books accidentally. I think I want to go with that in the sky up here, not down below, but just we'll add just a little shimmer of something. Okay, so I've got my stuff stacked up about how I want it. And look at this is heat resistant. This um, mat. I think is just fantastic. I can put that on there and not worry about the hot getting to it. It'll peel right off. Just glue my sections together. Have fun with these finials. They are just a trip and a half. I'll do my varnish after I'm all done and I'll just spray it on because that'll be much easier than trying to get into all the little nooks and crannies and things like that. Okay, I got a little wine bottle here, which I'll kind of nestle in so that it has some support from a book. Okay, I've got it. Ah, I put my palette right on my non-sticky, non-stick craft mat glue. Um, I've got my wine glass based with um, the slate gray and now I've got to put a little bit of detailing on him and I'm going to just give his upper rim that reflection. Helps if I, all my paints are dry, can you tell? a mess. Okay, now on the inside we have to paint that there's wine inside of there too, which is the um, black plum. So we'll just paint a nice lovely circle so that it looks like there's something in that wine glass. Wow, like a lot of water on my brush. And then we're ready to glue this on as well. I can't decide if I want two or one wine glasses. I think we're going to have one. I think we'll put that. Okay, so this is our little finial set. have a magnet that gets glued on and what you can do with these we sell these extra little wood nuggets they just twist off so you can paint that to go with your scene um, or you can paint them black or light colors and dark colors um, whichever you like and they just twist off and replace very easily 